So I was shooting uh, pretty late last night, a bunch of episodes, and got way drunker than I intended to be. I hope some of that content is usable uh, for the show. Um, definitely need a little bit of an eye opener here this morning as we get rolling on some more episodes. Um, let's make this suffering bastard for I suffer and am a bastard. I'll do the intro thing. So we're making a drink called the Suffering Bastard, which is such a great name for a tiki drink. It's a weird one. It's a weird one. Okay, so Trader Vic's serves a drink that they call the Suffering Bastard that uh, is probably more in line with like a boozier version of a Mai Tai and doesn't bear much resemblance to the original formula. Um, but again, the original formula is not that old. Well, it's one of the drinks where you can really trace it to a specific time and a place uh, and an actual inventor. It was invented by a chemist who decided that chemistry was uh, not the greatest racket to be in, got into bartending instead, a guy named Joe Shalom. Sh I think it might actually just be Shalom, Shalom. S-C-I-A-L-O-M. I don't actually know how to pronounce that. Skialum? That seems weird. I think it's probably Shalom or something like that or whatever. I, I, he's a Jewish guy, so it might be Shalom or close to that. Anyway, he was the bartender at the Shepherd's the Shepherd Hotel bar in Cairo, Egypt, in the 40s. So, while well, World War II is going on. Uh, so British officers and units, and I guess some American ones too, would be cycling back and forth to the front and then back to Egypt, you know, on rotation, um, fighting Rommel, and then coming back and fighting some Rommel. And the officers would congregate, apparently, around this hotel bar. It was sort of their uh, de facto uh, officers club or whatever. So everybody knew Joe, and he would make everybody drinks, and uh, they got pretty busy at the bar. And one sad morning, uh, Joe was asked to come up with a hangover remedy for somebody who came up with this drink, the Suffering Bastard. I think it had another name originally. I've never had it. <laughs> I've just never had it. We're gonna make it right now. Uh, this version is found in the Smuggler's Cove book by Martin Kate and Rebecca Kate. Uh, the book that is sort of the guide to everything Smuggler's Cove does at Smuggler's Cove San Francisco. Fantastic tiki bar. Uh, happened to stop in there on my honeymoon. Great, 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 great spot. Um, I was jet lagged and drunk, so I barely remember it, but it was fantastic from what I do remember. This is a great book. I strongly encourage you to buy a copy. Uh, and there's a link right down below if you're interested. Uh, anyway. There's a few versions of this recipe, some with bourbon, some with brandy. Uh, Smuggler's Cove actually favors the brandy, uh, but most sources I've looked into said that bourbon was where mm, the, the recipe kind of wound up over the years. So I suppose I'm not really making the exact Smuggler's Cove recipe. I'm making it with bourbon. It's an excellent tiki mug that I bought, and I can't resist putting this drink in it, so I will. Uh, that will be available uh, for your pleasure in the links below. Uh, but you can build it in anything. Double old-fashioned, big rocks glass, Collins glass, chimney. I don't think it matters much. We're going to start by putting four ounces of ginger beer into this glass using DG Jamaican ginger. I know on the show I usually make my own ginger syrup, um, but I don't always have time to do that. <laughs> and neither do you. There's a pretty good ginger beer. I like that, it's great. It has a real, um, whew, that's great. It's got, it's got character. It's like a very rooty, earthy vibe to it. I like that brand. But that sits now, and the rest of this we build, we shake, and then we combine. I guess it's clean. I need half an ounce of fresh lime juice. I need a quarter ounce of Demerara syrup. I need one ounce of a London dry gin. And one ounce of bourbon. I'm using this Eagle Rare. Pretty good bourbon for the money. I need two dashes of Angostura bitters. Okay, now we're gonna uh, shake this part up. Uh, so I will put some ice into my shaker. One big. 
one on the towel. We can open pour this into our glass, right to the perfect line. <sighs> Let's garnish this. We should garnish this with, I think, a couple palm fronds, pineapple fronds or palm fronds or something like that. Let's garnish this with a live orchid. Let's just do that. And right there, oh, that looks fantastic. And I'll toss in a straw for good measure. And let's enjoy this suffering bastard. Oh my God, that's great. Much like a mule drink or anything with ginger beer in it, you don't get much other than the ginger beer. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's a sneaky drink. Uh, <laughs> you get a little bit of the Angostura spiciness on top of the ginger beer. Um, the bourbon, is mellow and kind of overpowered by the ginger. Um, it's a tasty drink. It's very good, easy to drink. It just tastes like a delicious, sweet, slightly woody, slightly earthy ginger beverage. I believe that if you told someone this was non-alcoholic, they'd probably believe you. Don't do that. Uh, how is my hangover feeling? Am I feeling better? Well, science would tell you that no, I am not. Uh, that only time can cure these wounds. So, sadly, I feel much the same. Like a miserable, suffering bastard. At least I have a drink to keep me company now. I mean, seriously, what's going on? Yeah, it just tastes like ginger. Now I'm getting a little bit of the interplay between the gin and the ginger, a little bit of that juniper note. I think the bourbon is kind of overpowered here. I almost wonder if you shouldn't just make this with all gin. I might revisit this. I might, because I have some thoughts on it and I'm not gonna elaborate on them here. God damn it. It's not the form or the time of the place. You know what I will say about it though? Egypt is hot, or so I am told. And uh, I think if I was sweltering in Egypt in the summer, I would want a drink just like this in my hand. It's a cooler, it's like liquid air conditioning. Yeah, this is like a perfect drink for a hot Egyptian summer. A little bit of ginger fire, a little bit of ginger. I'm Greg, this is How To Drink The Show. I'm making cocktails and how to drink them. I'm on Twitter at How To Drink. I'm on Instagram at How To Drink. I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. I'll see you next week with uh, another original cocktail and later in the week with another old cocktail, with another classic. And uh, until then, uh, stay frosty. Maybe that's my sign off. I'll just start saying that. Stay frosty. Stay frosty. <laughs>